Hi, my name is Judy Kessinger. I'm the owner and creator of the FitNice system. And today I'd like to show you how to take your ironing board and make it your third hand. Now this is a tool in your sewing room. Everybody has an ironing board, but I bet you have a pad that's just like a millimeter thick. So the first thing you need to do is to pad your ironing board because I need to be able to take a pin stick it in there and it stands up all by itself. If you don't have it padded, go to Goodwill or some discount place and buy a 100% cotton blanket. Now it needs to be 100% cotton because you're gonna iron on it. Fold it up, lay it on your ironing board, cut away any of the excess and put your ironing board pad over the top of it. That's gonna allow you to use this as your third hand. So let me show you how we're gonna start this. This is tape. This is fusible tape and it's on a paper. And I'm sure you've seen this. They come in lots of different brands. What we're going to do is I'm going to pull this off of here so that you can see the, the tape versus the paper. Now the paper is on there so that you can iron this right to your fabric. But I want to show you another little trick. If you iron it to your trim, I'm going to show you how to put this on with pins. Very easy and simple to do. This is bias, bias stretches. If you pin bias onto an item, a garment, whatever, and you and start to sew, you're going to wind up pulling lines in it. So if you put glue on the back side of it, start it on your project like this, because it's bias, it will curve very nicely and put pins in it. And you can see that I'm literally sticking these pins right into the ironing board. Then take your iron and press it on. This way, when you go to stitch this, it's not gonna move on you. So it's a wonderful, wonderful way to do this. Now, I've also done this on a blouse, and the blouse has, let me pull this out of my way so you can see this better. The blouse has bias trim on the neck edge and on the sleeveless edge, the armholes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this blouse, and by the way, this blouse and the one I have on are on the variations. You get over a hundred different garments with these five variations. It's used with the master top pattern. So follow the directions and you can create what I have on, plus the blouse that I'm showing you right now. This is finished with bias. Can you see the bias edge around the neck edge? And it's an, even a different color around the armhole. When you do this, what you're gonna do is you're going to actually pin the garment into your ironing board. Now, bias will stretch on you. So you wanna make sure that you have something that's already finished stretching. That's why I'm pinning it. So that it, once I steam it, it's gonna stay exactly where I've pinned it. I've left this loose to show you that if you use your tweezers and just take a piece of this glue in sheet form like this, you can put it right under the edge and it's a lot easier to move with the um, tweezers than it is your fingers. So press this down with your fingers. Now you've got it in place. If you need to, you can even pin the neck edge into your ironing board and it's not going anywhere. It's gonna stay exactly where you pinned it. Take your iron, press it down and bingo, you're, you're finished. Go and stitch it and it won't move on you while you're stitching. So that's the advantage of using the pins in the ironing board. Now, if you look at the garment that I have on the dress form back here, this is a princess line garment and everybody loves princess lines and can you know do you notice that i have those top stitched that's a facing on the inside if you took that facing put it on the inside and pinned it when you started to stitch your princess line guess what you're going to have it's going to pull on you again so let me show you what i'm going to do with this I have this in green and black. You can see it just a little bit better. And this also has princess lines on it. So what I'm gonna do is show you how you, once you put this facing on, we're gonna put it on the ironing board like this. And again, there's the, my nice facing. We're gonna take our pins and pin it into the ironing board while you're working on it. And then it's not gonna creep or crawl away from you. 
I'll bet all of you have at home a blouse that you've purchased someplace and it has a facing to it and the facing's constantly coming out. You can actually glue that facing to the inside permanently because once you put your iron to this glue, it's permanent. Very easy to work with. So I've got this all laid out. I've got it pinned in and I've got it laying nice and flat. Now take your strips of the glue, put it underneath your princess line, press it with your iron again, and then when you go to the other side, take the pins out and turn it to the right side, you are ready to top stitch. And once you've top stitched, that holds everything in place. So it's a fast and easy way to stitch without ever having anything crawl away from you. Now let me show you another little hint while I've got this jacket in my hand because this is really simple. Everybody puts separating zippers in, then they wind up with little ripples. Now the first thing to make sure you don't have ripples is to use French fuse wherever you're going to put that zipper. But this is another little trick and it's back to your ironing board again. Once you've finished your garment, before you wear it, just take it and put it over your ironing board like this with the zipper closed, pin the bottom, put pins in the bottom, like this, go to the top, put pins in the top, stretch it, put pins in the top like this. Now take a press cloth. If you don't own a press cloth, remember that pattern ease that we made our patterns with? You can use that as a press cloth in an emergency. I'm going to take a press cloth, put it on top of my zipper because you don't want to scratch your iron and I'm going to steam it. Really steam it good. Heat and steam. Let it sit until it's completely cool. Then you can unpin it, take it off of your ironing board, wear it, take compliments because you have a nice flat zipper that has no buckles in it. Easy, easy to do. When you bought the Master Top and DVD, you saw these garments on the DVD. One is a scoop neck, one is a V-neck, and it's a mitered V, believe it or not. And I'm going to show you how to do this because it's really simple. First of all, when you finish with your scoop neck, a lot of ladies say, ooh, it's all puckered. Let me show you what you need to do. Take it to your ironing board, pin into your ironing board. Now, one little hint, when you work with knits, don't ever put them over the edge of your ironing board because you're gonna stretch them out of shape. You wanna lay the front and the back together just as I have it laying here, and you're gonna pin into it. Just pin into it gently like that. Take your iron, and when you iron a neckline, iron it from the bottom towards the neck, the bottom towards the neck, and the bottom towards the neck. And you will have a perfectly flat neckline that's not stretched out of shape, but it looks beautiful, just like this one. So really simple to do. Now on the V-neck, if you notice it's mitered, I don't know if you've ever mitered anything, but that's kind of hard to do. Let me show you how I've done that. I've actually glued this strip, but you absolutely positively have to do this on the ironing board because what I want you to do is to stretch the V-neck, put a pin in, stretch it just a little bit and put a, v, a, a pin in. Now you can see I have a nice flat neckline. This is where I'm going to glue that mitered V. So you're going to just put a dab of the glue stick underneath the mitered V, take your iron, press it in place, let it dry, and then finish the neckline according to the directions and you'll have a beautiful V-neck garment. Now let's talk about something else that you can do. If you look at the, the shirt that I have on, I don't know that you can see this on the video, but these are strips. These were all glued on with the glue stick and then stitched on. But I had to hold them down. How would you ever pin all these strips? You wouldn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that you could do this on white or you could do this on black. Uh, I have to tell you, when I did this garment, I first put these strips on a piece of white fabric and they totally disappeared. When I put them on black fabric, it just kind of showcased them. So I'm going to put these strips on the black fabric like this, glue them in place, press over what you've glued, 
take, let it dry, take it to your sewing machine and stitch it on. It's not going to shift on you and you're going to have a beautiful top. If you want to do it on the white and you can see this shows up just a little bit different on the white than it did on the black. Again, glue it in place and you can pin it. If you want to take this into a curve like this, pin it into your ironing board as a curve. Press it, glue it in place, go back to your sewing machine, stitch it on, and you're ready to go. So easy, fast, simple tricks. It's all done with your pins and your padded ironing board. That's your new third hand that you've got. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you've seen how simple and easy this system is to work with. All of the products you've seen in the video are available on my website or a link on my website. Please make sure while you're there to check out the classes to see where I am. Join me on Facebook under Fit Nice and be sure to join the Fit Club. Thank you.